So according to the economist John Maynard Keynes, in the long run, we are all dead. Yeah. Well, for economists, the long run is decades, maybe centuries. Not really that long at all. As a scientist, I work on the really long term. So I like to think about things on timescales of millions of years, or tens or hundreds of millions of years, or even billions of years. So on that kind of time scale, there's no doubt that none of us here will be around. Sad, perhaps, but true. So why might we want to think about these long time scales? Well, I think it's interesting to think about where humanity might be in the next million years, the next billion years. Where are we headed? What's our future look like? That's a hard question to answer, and I would say it's not a question I can answer with any certainty. But I think we can get some good ideas, play around with some possibilities. Now, it would be really helpful if we had an example of another species like ours, which had developed intelligence and technology and TED Talks and was able to go out into the universe and spread their ideas and tell other people how they did it. That would be really great. Uh, unfortunately, despite what you might read on the internet or uh, see on YouTube or the History Channel, uh, there's no really good evidence, really strong evidence, that we have either been visited by aliens now or in the past. We know that there haven't been any signals that we've received through our giant telescopes that SETI uses and so on. That's a little depressing, I think, but it is a fact. So far as we know, we are alone in the universe as a technological civilization. Maybe someday we'll discover that's wrong, but for right now, that's what we've got to work with. So what does that tell us? Well, maybe it doesn't tell us very much at all, but it might give us some interesting information about where we can expect to be headed in the future. Maybe depressing, but maybe useful. So one possibility that we don't know of any other civilizations is just that it's really, really unlikely that civilizations develop. That's a possibility. But there's really nothing in physics or chemistry or biology that prohibits life from developing. In fact, from what we know of the Earth, life gets started pretty easily. And it develops over time, and we're intelligent, and so probably there are other intelligent civilizations out there as well. So why don't we see them? The physicist Enrico Fermi asked this question. He said, if life is pretty likely to evolve and develop, which I would argue it is, why don't we see other civilizations? Well, there's lots of possibilities, lots of different solutions. People have come up with all kinds of creative ideas to explain this paradox. My favorite, the one that I think is most likely to be correct, is simply that intelligent civilizations don't have very long lifetimes. So maybe there was another civilization like ours somewhere in our galaxy, and they lived for a while, and now they're gone. Why do I think that's likely? Well, look at our own human example. First of all, we have about 15,000 nuclear weapons in the world right now. Yeah, it's not quite as scary as it was a few decades ago when I was a kid and I uh, was watching a movie like The Day After. If you've seen it, you know what I mean. If you haven't, it's worth watching if you want to be terrified. So it's not quite as scary as it used to be. There used to be many more nuclear warheads in the world than there are today. Of that, I'm very grateful. Uh, but the fact remains that if we were to use those weapons, we would probably wipe ourselves out. In fact, simulations have shown that even a small regional war between two powers such as India and Pakistan, with a small arsenal, maybe a few warheads exchanged, could change our climate dramatically enough to lead to the starvation of millions or hundreds of millions of people. Pretty significant for a very small confrontation. So nuclear weapons are one of our inventions that are definitely dangerous to our continued survival. But there's other possible inventions that we might come up with, or maybe have already come up with, which could threaten our survival. For instance, we're really good at genetic engineering these days, and we're getting better all the time. That has some huge benefits. Probably, we would not be able to feed nearly as many people as we do today without some of those advances. But all good things can go wrong. 
So perhaps someone develops a new microbe, a new virus, or something like this that's intended to solve some problem, a good purpose. But maybe it goes wrong, it gets loose, it travels through the population, wipes us all out. Possible. Maybe our robotic creations decide, oh, we're good, we don't need you guys anymore. Terminator style, right? <laughs> yeah, possible. Maybe a little far-fetched, but maybe not. So the human species presents a lot of significant challenges to itself. In fact, even our most simple, most basic invention, burning things in order to make power, has set us on an unprecedented course. So about 10,000 years ago, human civilization was getting started. And over that last 10,000 years, we've developed in a pretty mild, fairly temperate, reasonably calm climate state. It hasn't been real hot most of the time. It hasn't been very cold over that 10,000 years or so. This is a period called the Holocene. It's nice and stable. Unfortunately, those days are behind us. About 200 years ago, give or take, we started on a planet-wide atmospheric chemistry experiment, which I would normally think is awesome because I love atmospheric chemistry. But in this case, it's going to have significant negative consequences for us, unintended consequences. We're already seeing these consequences, right? Sea level rise, more extreme storms. In the not too distant future, half of Florida may be underwater. A low-lying country like the Maldives may be gone entirely. We're gonna see malaria and other diseases spreading to farther reaches than they've ever been before. We're going to see droughts and floods and half the country on fire, which we're already also seeing. So climate change is a huge challenge and it was brought on by ourselves unknowingly. There are other possibilities. So we're really good at making more of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. In, in 1800, there were about a billion of us. That seems like a lot, but now there's seven and a half billion. And by 2050, there might be 10 billion. You might notice that that's not a, a straight line curve. It's more like this. So that's a problem, right? We can't keep going like this. We can't keep making more of ourselves and continue to feed and clothe and house everyone. We've made astonishing advancements. Decades ago, probably most people would have said, no way the Earth can support seven and a half billion people. That's crazy. But we have hardworking farmers and scientists who have made it possible. But we can't keep doing that forever. Eventually, we will simply eat ourselves out of house and home. So maybe other technological civilizations out there reached a point where they grew themselves out of existence, or they blew themselves up or their robotic creations wiped them out, and so their lifetime was short. Now, those are problems that we can mostly overcome. We can make choices which will reduce the risk of those self-imposed threats. But it turns out that the universe itself is a pretty dangerous place. So over the last three billion years or so that life's been around on this planet, there have been about five billion species that's everything from trilobites to giant dragonflies to cats and dogs and you and me. That's a lot. The bad news is 99% of those species are now gone, extinct, never to be seen or heard from again in the universe. That sounds pretty bad, right? <laughs> but we're still here, so maybe it's not so bad. Well, bad things can happen from outside of the planet. For instance, you may have heard of the dinosaurs probably have. Okay. You may also have heard that about 65 million years ago, they were all wiped out almost instantaneously, geologically instantaneously, by a big rock from space. Now, the dinosaurs were incredibly successful. They ruled the planet as a group for about 165 million years. That's a really long time. That's a, over a thousand times longer than the human species has been around. But they were all wiped out almost instantaneously by a power completely outside of their knowledge. It could happen again. There are comets and asteroids roaming around our solar system all the time. One of them could impact the Earth, the end of us. The good news is we can see a lot of them coming and we can prepare. So maybe it's not quite as scary as it seems. Now, it turns out that our own planet is also pretty dangerous. So about 250 million years ago, about 95% of the species on Earth 
went extinct almost all at once, probably because of massive climate change following some severe volcanic activity at the time. So volcanic activity seems kind of scary, and it is, but it's also an absolute necessity in order for complex life to develop. In order for the climate system to work properly over long enough periods of time so that things like you and me can develop and become intelligent and develop technology, we probably have to have volcanic activity. But at the same time, it could kill us off at any time. So we're kind of stuck here. So really, what are our prospects? Well, they kind of don't look good, right? Um, it might be a little depressing. As I said, though, there are choices we can make. We can reduce our nuclear arsenal. I, we can. We've been doing it, actually. We can do better. We can avoid unintended consequences as much as possible. Be careful when we're developing technology. We can pay attention and actually change our behavior when we discover something isn't working. That's hard, but it is doable. The external universe, we can't control, but we can watch. We can watch for those asteroids and comets. We can prepare ahead of time. We can have a plan in place to say, that's going to be here in 50 years. What are we going to do about it? So there are things we can do. There are steps we can take. Unfortunately, in about a billion years, the sun's luminosity will increase to the point where all of the Earth's water will boil off into space. Not instantaneously, but at the end of that process, the Earth will be uninhabitable to certainly any complex life. So, at some point, we have to leave. We simply cannot stay on this planet forever. Now, a billion years is a long time in the future. But eventually, this planet will be uninhabitable. And the longer we stay, the more vulnerable we become. So we must go to the moon. We need to go to Mars. We need to go to the satellites of Jupiter and Saturn. And we should go there anyway, because can you imagine the views? <laughs> Incredible. So there are ways that we can save ourselves. Now, most of us don't have to spend all of our days thinking about the really long run. Right? The next billion years is not something most of us have to spend our time worrying about. And that's good. But some of us should spend our time thinking about the next billion years. Because only by starting now and working together can we come up with solutions. Only by working together, starting to do the things that we're able to do now, can we take the steps that are necessary to ensure our continued survival? Wouldn't it be a shame if we are the only technological civilization in the universe and we let ourselves go extinct? So I think we have a responsibility. I think we have a, a moral imperative, if you will, to do what we can now to make the steps of the future possible in order to ensure that we continue to survive in a universe that might be so dangerous that we're the only species around to think about it. Thank you.